Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make three different kinds of train tracks in Bloxburg with three different budgets. Extremely expensive, medium priced, then cheap and simple. This is a subway station I made. It's pretty small because it's part of another build. I love trains and train tracks. I could look at train tracks all day. The tracks I've got here are concrete slab tracks based on this picture from the Brit Pave website. These are the medium priced ones. The first tracks I made for this station were these ballast tracks, which I love, but I couldn't use them because they use up a lot of plot data. To lay tracks, the length of the station would take about 150% of the plot data limit. Okay, let's get started on the ballast tracks. If you don't want to see these, you can skip ahead to the next ones at about the 4 minute mark. I saved this one section in my basement because I couldn't bear to delete it, and just in case I wanted to use it one day. For the base, use a cube and flatten it as far as it will go, that's $31. As well as the price, I'm also including the size, which currently you can only see on a computer. Make it wider by $175, and this way by $18. For the sleeper, which is that bit that supports the rails, use a smooth cube, and resize it down by $47. Make it wider by $197, and shorten it this way by $31. Keep the base in the sleeper medium stone grey and change the material to concrete. Move the sleeper right to the edge of the base and make sure it's centered this way. Now for the ballast, which is the little stones or gravel. These are all made of basic shapes shrunk as small as they'll go. You can use whichever shapes you like the look of, but here are the ones I use. A horizontal wedge, an inverted wedge, a corner wedge, a convex straight, a concave inner corner, a convex outer corner, and a beveled vertical cylinder. Keep the colour medium stone grey and change the texture to slate. Copy that colour and texture onto the other shapes. Then resize all the shapes as small as they'll go. It's so funny to see them disappearing like that. Help! Now you clone the pieces of the stone and place them randomly on the base. This part takes a really long time, and you need to continually rotate the pieces a bit each time you place one so they're not all facing the same way, to give it a more natural appearance. Keep placing the stones in layers and pile them up until they reach about the top of the sleeper. Okay, this is all I'm going to do with this one because I don't actually need to make one, I can just clone the other one that I made before. I'll just rotate this for looks. Now clone it. Each section costs 120... Ah, well, 120831 dollars and uses about 3.5% of the plot data. To lay the rails, I'm using temporary support cubes, resized down by $19. The rails are going to be one grid square apart for simplicity. So to guide me to line them up perfectly, I'll change the cube texture to checkered tiles. Then place them centered along the grid line. For the rails, I used a small industrial beam. But if you don't like the ridge along the top, you could use ordinary beams. Make sure the rails are straight along the grid lines. There you go, that's almost done. All I have to do now is mess up the stones a bit. Because they're cloned, each section will look exactly the same, and that's a bit unnatural. So I'm moving some stones and rotating others, adding some more, and putting a few stones on the sleepers. Okay, let's check them out. Ah! <laughs> this is so laggy. And this is just three sections. I don't know what it would be like with more sections, whether it would be more laggy or the same amount of lag. I don't have room to test that on this plot because the plot data is already getting pretty high. Okay, next we're doing the moderately priced concrete slab tracks, which in real life are actually more expensive than ballast tracks. For the base, use a cube. Widen it as far as it'll go, which is $175, then flatten it as far as it'll go, that's $31, and widen it this way by $35. I've just cloned a section of these tracks from the subway station so I could check everything matches while I make them. Now for the dark part in the middle of the sleepers, which is the metal part, we use a cube. Resize that down by $30, shorten it this way by $20, and this way by $27. Colour it dark stone grey and the material's cosy fabric, which is a really good alternative for metal things when you want something less shiny. I got this idea from Names Chloe on Twitter, an amazing builder. For the concrete sleeper, use a beveled cube. Resize it down by $68. Shorten it this way by $47. 
and this way by $61. Keep it medium stone grey and the textures concrete. I forgot to colour the base cube. The colour's mid grey and the material's concrete. Make sure the base cube is lined up nicely along the grid lines. And then we'll place the sleepers, starting with the middle part. Set it right at the edge of the base, centred on the grid line, with the placement grid on the smallest grid. Then clone it and place the next one five clicks along from the first one. The last one should be three spaces from the edge. Do the same on the other side and then you can place the concrete beveled cubes right next to the middle bit. Next we'll place the chains which are supposed to look like they're holding the rails to the sleepers. To place the chains I'll use a cube and flatten it as far as it'll go which is $31. Place it at the edge of the sleeper so it's hanging over the edge of it. Use thick chain and change it to custom placement. The round blob that shows the starting point for the chain placement should be right on the join of the dark cozy fabric cube and the concrete beveled cube right at the base where it meets the base cube. It's pretty hard to see. Then bring the chain up to rest on the guide cube. Make it as short as it'll go which is $74. I'll place a bit of rail to check if the chain is in the right position. Resize a cube down by $21 and clone it and place a small industrial beam. Yep, that looks good. Color the chain dark stone grey and you can't change the texture. Clone the chain and place it the same all the way down and then do the same facing in the other direction. I need to rotate this so the sleepers aren't bumping, then clone another one. To lay the rails, use the same cubes from the test rails, the ones resized down by $21, and make sure they're centered on the grid line and sitting on the floor, not on the base cube. If you want to place them on the base cube, you'd need to adjust their height. The rails are small industrial beam again and line it up along the big grid line. I made the rails one grid square apart again for simplicity. So there you go, these concrete slab tracks cost about $29,000. I really like the look of these. Now I'll make some budget friendly tracks which I've never tried before so I hope they look okay. I'm starting with the floor. Floor's cheap. I'm keeping the colour medium stone grey and changing the texture to grass. The floor's glitching a bit because there's already floor here. I'll just delete the floor underneath it. For the sleepers I'm using a large square beam and placing it with a medium placement grid. Place the first one, one medium grid square from the top and two medium grid squares in from the edge. And make sure it's centered along the large grid squares. Place the next one three clicks along from the edge of the first one. I'm coloring them cloudy gray and the texture's wood planks. To lay the rails, resize a cube on the small grid down by $22. Then the same as before, use a small industrial beam and lay it along the grid lines. To give the edges a more natural shape, I'll use some dirt piles and stepping stones and make them medium stone grey and the smooth pebble texture. Place these kind of randomly around the edges. Well, that's cheap. That grass looks a bit flat, so I'll put more dirt piles around the tracks. I've copied the same colour and texture as the grass. Okay, that looks better. Let's check them out of build mode. So here are the three different train tracks on three different budgets. These ones look pretty good for the price, I think. The other two are definitely my favorites. Ah, the lag. <laughs> I never get tired of that. I love these ballast tracks so much. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Bye.